it's 7 o'clock, and I will call the February 24th, 2014 school board meeting to order. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? 24th, 2014. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Roll call. Mrs. Mayor, if you do the roll call, please. Absolutely. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Jagosinski. Here. Kate Mayer, I'm here. Tim Menninger. Here. Colin Trivett. Here. Lisa Collins. Here. Gary Dunlap. Here. And Joe Gittins. Here. Okay, with seven of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Board norms reflection. As you recall, we met um, in a group session and established our group norms and are they in our folders <coughs> we did go ahead i believe put a paper copy in your folder i know it's also part of your electronic board packet later but um it's at the bottom of it i think uh are you finding it mm -hmm. i didn't find it in my packet in the, i have an extra if somebody needs one i got an extra two well, I would just note that we talked about um, decisions requiring discussion, expectation of the board to place the group's needs first, <coughs> clear that the board is in agreement, um, that the board chair will speak on behalf of the board. Um, but if any board member has questions, certainly encourage them to ask those questions. Um, board members will equally share in discussion. It will be my role to try to redirect if that becomes um, isn't part of the, the process that evening. Um, each board member will maintain the integrity of the board. Board members' comments will be directly related to the topic. Again, I may need to redirect if off topic. Board members who wish to discuss new topics shall add those at the end of the meeting. And as you note, board reports and discussion now is placed later in our agenda to allow that to happen. We will respect, honor, and learn from the opinion of others. Uh, regardless of how it's presented, inappropriate behaviors will be addressed by the chair, as is part of Robert's rules, obviously. Um, board members will state opinions in a respectful manner. If a board member does not share an opinion, it will be assumed the board member is in agreement unless they want it to be noted otherwise. And board members will come prepared. And hopefully not at the very last minute. I apologize for that. <laughs> but those are the norms for our board member discussion. Um, as indicated, I know I wasn't at the last meeting, but as indicated, this I thought was a very positive and productive meeting where we discuss these items and these things because comments that do come from the board represent the board. And um, I think we all are in agreement that student learning is what we're here for, and we don't want other things to get in the way of that. So. Unless there's any comments or questions rela related to that, we will move on to the next item, which is approval of agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. I would so move. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <clears throat> Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. And I don't see anyone coming forward this evening, so we will move on to recognition and thank you. Dr. Carlson. I'm going to go ahead and stand out in front. And it's always a, anyway, a, a fun time, but just a real privilege to be able to recognize uh, members of our organization here, our school district, who have uh, <laughs> achieved in so many ways, but uh, have received recently some very special recognition in this case from the Wisconsin State Reading Association. And so Lori Coop, teacher at Sand Lake Elementary, uh, we're just so pleased to be able to recognize you and for the, not only the achievement at the state level, but actually more importantly for what you do and what you have done so many years here for the kids in our school district. So with that, I'm going to invite 
Cheryl over here, and I'm going to let the two of you have a photo and just, <coughs> and, and then. Um, <laughs> wanted to say a small token of our appreciation for all that you've done through the years and ser have served on committees with you and I know about the excellence in the classroom that you've had so yeah I know you do <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's, that's how I know that's right that's exactly and so we so much appreciate your continued efforts in the district Thank you. congratulations Thank you. just to kind of explain what the award is about. It's um, for outstanding service in the area of reading, and Jody Hoshite was the one that nominated me, and it's probably a culmination of many years of work on my part. Um, just being involved in language arts committee, um, getting my master's degree in reading, working as the reading <coughs> resource teacher at Sand Lake, and, and bringing a lot of changes um, to kindergarten through second grade reading there. I've taught classes at Viterbo in reading. I've mentored national board certified candidates. Um, just a, a lifelong learner um, and continue to hope to spread my love of reading to the students I work with and then also the knowledge that I have about reading to administrators and other people to make sure that we're making the right moves for students. So this was quite an honor. Thank you for nominating me, Jody. Congratulations. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Cheryl, can I say something about Lori? Sure. Would that be appropriate? Sure, that would. Okay. Lori? Is that okay she's with busy. Lori that I say something about you? <laughs> so one of the first times we met, Lori had the bravado to, <laughs> she knows the story I'm going to tell. We were in, when she talked about going to grad school for a reading specialist, our 317s, I think. And we had a professor who was open to bribes. And she said, if I brought you donuts, would we have to take the test? And he said, no. That's so she brought, <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> and as our, she and I went through those courses, it's not just the donut bribe that I respect you for, Lori, but um, so much that you have done with your life. Um, she's been a leader also in the local reading association, MWR. C. Um, and we've worked together on that and young authors still so involved with that. This district is so lucky to have you and I'm just lucky to call you colleague and friend. You are amazing to me so thanks for all you've done. I'm so happy for this award for you. Excellent. All right. <laughs> because I think, you know, I don't know if board members should or could be bribed, but a donut, you know? <laughs> I think it worked twice. I think so. <laughs> well, again, congratulations, congratulations, and thank you for all that you do on behalf of the district. Thank you very much. And I know uh, that she, Lori knows that she can be, that she's excused and she can leave whenever she wants. You are <laughs> you're certainly always invited to stay. Oh. Invited to stay, but you, we also understand you need to, they need to get going. So thank you again, Lori. Great. Then moving on to district administrator's report, Dr. Carlson. So I'm going to focus my report on uh, some of the additional items that you see, the update on the school year calendar work that's being done by uh, eight of our school districts in this region, a uh, teacher compensation model uh, committee update, and then a little bit about the upcoming board workshop that we planned with uh, Matthew Cale. The other parts of my report, printed uh, part, as far as just again, encourage you to read through the happenings reports and excellent way for you to keep up on the great things happening in our schools and buildings and departments. So if I could, uh, just draw your attention to school year calendar. 
And I believe in your, uh, should have most of this in your packet. Uh, we might have also, you might have a couple uh, things, paper copies in your packet in your folder as well. So as you know, we've been uh, involved in a conversation uh, regionally involving eight other school districts. I'll refer to a, this group more as the consortium in some ways throughout this. And so uh, I think it was timely for an update to the board, uh, but also there is some, something specific that I'm looking for your input tonight, uh, more of a kind of consensus and not a real action item, but more of the okay to continue to move forward by the, one of the next steps would be that school districts involved with this would be forwarding a letter to the Department of Public Instruction. Um, and the concept involves some basic components. And so I want, I want you to think of this just as a true concept and don't be thinking of you know, a specific calendar in mind, visualizing that, but just the concept. So the conversation has been centered around starting school earlier. And as a board, you've had conversations about extending the school year, uh, considering or exploring more of a year-round uh, school concept, providing more opportunities for students throughout the year. And so uh, not that this tonight not that this uh, is to be viewed truly as a year-round concept, but I think there are components to this that get at providing more opportunities for our students. So one of those is an earlier start date to the school year. And one of the driving forces behind this is that second bullet that you see, where throughout the course of the year, uh, this concept would uh, include three week-long intercessions, academic intercessions, uh, for students. And one of the ideas is that not only this school year, but every school year, the school districts involved would agree to have these intercessions at approximately the same time every school year. So when you see that 10th, 20th, 30th week of the school year, those are approximate times so that our students, our employees, our families, our community, we know every year that, that this is the time where the regular session uh, stops for a short one week period and then additional opportunities take place during that time. There would be also common, uh, about two to three common staff development dates throughout the course of the year that school districts then would be able to come together and share resources and actually have staff working with other staff in other districts. Those, to me, are some of, are probably the three major components to this. And quite honestly, the second and third bullet are, are some of the key ones. Uh, I, I do add that the conversation concept talks about uh, making an effort of trying to have a so-called common end date, not exact down to the day, but in that same period of time within a week or so. But to emphasize, this also means that each school district has the opportunity to individualize that calendar to meet their unique needs. So uh, what really I'm coming to you, not only providing an update on the work being done, but we're at a, a point, I believe, in our conversations that uh, we are ready to craft a letter, actually a draft um, has been presented and available to you. Now, I really have to say, by the way, that um, this, this draft I did forward to our district staff on Friday as well. And I know that it's it's not perfect. So if you found errors uh, in grammar or that type of thing, that's, there still needs to be work done. And so, but the most important thing about it is really uh, telling the story as far as the concept of this of this mention, and so the while it might be small print, the 
these five points are just the five points that I put up on the slide previously. And so the purpose of this is to go to the Department of Public Instruction and seek the support of DPI in this concept. And the sequencing of, of this would be to get that support before we perhaps would come back and truly engage in a conversation in our school community uh, about going in this direction. So by putting our name <coughs> on this, along with up to eight other school districts, does not commit us, commit the board, commit our community, to go into a calendar like that talk that incorporates these concepts. But it does say to the Department of Public Instruction, do you support this concept? If you do, please share that with us. If you do not, please share why. So that we can continue to try to get at, uh, get at what I believe are um, something that's could be better for our students and our, our teachers. So that's the gist of this letter and where we're at right now is we're each coming to our Board of Education asking for the opportunity to, uh, I'll put my, I would put my name on here, School District of Pullman, and, along with up to seven others, um, and then we move this forward. We would wait and hear back and I would, I would report back to you. And then at that point, we perhaps, it would become more of a true local conversation about where we want to go. Uh, I think I, I will put this up, I think I included this. Um, this is just a very rough draft of the concept, and you can see the three different periods in there that are circled and those would represent those intercessions, which would provide us with, I can't even sit here to tell you today, with all the opportunities or possibilities. But that would be part of the creativity that we'd be going to work on. I would say that uh, it, the intent is, during that time, to serve the students. And so uh, what that would look like exactly, that, that work has yet to be done. So with that, um, I would take questions, but perhaps just um, if there are concerns to address those. Otherwise, I'd be leaving here tonight um, with at least uh, adding our name to this letter. Questions? Thanks for doing this, first of all. I think there are a lot of people interested in um, creativity with school calendar <clears throat> and I sometimes think as I follow politics that public schools have less opportunities for creativity than perhaps voucher schools have who can do what they want to do so I just appreciate you know the consortium and that many districts um, to me when you congregate um, that gives us a little bit more clout perhaps not always I know some of your letters have been rejected but you guys keep trying you women and men keep trying so I just appreciate that so thank you for that other questions Tim just two comments you knew I would on this mm -hmm. and uh, I, I really appreciate this I, I see dr. Carlson smiling um, even since before your time with the district I have been an advocate of your round school those who have been on the board of heard me talk about that for years I think this is certainly a very much a step in that right direction so thank you I really like what you put together here in the remedial sessions I think really speak to what we're here for and that student learning and putting that first and foremost um, in front so thank you for that um, the, the only comment I think you made that I had a little pause I said it doesn't really commit us to anything I would certainly hate to go through send the letter get approval and then say oh by the way just kidding we're not going to do this I, I would would hate to find <coughs> us in that spot so thank you and I, I perhaps the purpose of that statement is mm -hmm. more around that I, I want our stakeholders to know mm -hmm. that there would uh, we haven't gone to that true input um, that, that conversation and so 
it's more uh, mm -hmm. you know, new that, that has yet to come. Yeah, I think early on when we talked about the year-round calendar and looking at that, we talked about a process that would be inclusive of that, making sure right. stakeholders had input. And as Dr. Carlson approached me, because I'm the, that's me, I'm the stakeholder improvement or involvement person, um, he approached me a couple times about this because other school districts have gone through that whole process of getting buy-in by the stakeholders and then going to the DPI and being told no. And so I, you know, and I was glad to hear you were very um, clear that this is just this introductory, is this even possible kind of thing? And if it is or isn't, why? And what can we do to tweak it? So that uh, at the same time then, I'm assuming that Wendy will be pulling, she's got a committee, and would be pulling that committee together, or it could go to the Student Achievement and Learning Committee, which has all of those stakeholders in it as well, um, to gather that input from parents, and staff and yeah, yeah. all of the yeah. stakeholders. So. Parents, students, but also our, our community. Right. Uh, a number of things that potentially, and again, it's tempting to start creating that list, which many of us have behind the scenes, but uh, right now um, we're gonna hold off with the, spending too much time with the, the, not only the advantages, we clearly, I clearly believe there are some advantages get to even this point, mm -hmm. but, but before we start compiling the list of challenges and so on. Other comments on this side of the table? <laughs> well, I, I, I get the feeling the board is real supportive of this. I personally am more of a traditionalist, and I have, I have a lot of concerns about going down this road. And one is, if we split up the time off for the students in three-week chunks, uh, I'll make sure we get enough input from the public because you have, you have kindergarten children all the way up through high school children are going to have three weeks off here and three weeks off there and three weeks off there. How do parents manage that? Where do they get the child care? Who takes care of those kids? It makes, it makes, it makes being, it seems to me like it makes being a parent instead of, if it's advantageous, we should be able to have a, a steady schedule and, um, and work all the way through it and, and not have those breaks or, but I don't, I think it's really tough to manage. and. There's lots of kids that are 14, 15, 16, 17 years old who have three month summer jobs. Um, and being a farm kid, I know what I did <laughs> in the summertime. Uh, all those things kind of concern me We're going to full time school year and then breaking it up like that. It seems to me like breaking it into chunks um, is, is an advantage, is a big advantage as it sounds to me. So I'm not in favor of, of all around year, or school around year. And there are options, aren't there? I mean, you look at La Crosse, which has started with one school, so elementary level. This might be something that is more advantageous to a certain level instead of the whole district kind of thing. And so I'm hoping mm -hmm. that we keep those ideas. I know they also are, you know, providing, as you said, servicing the students during those off times. So that will add a cost, I suspect, to the district. And so we're if we're going to be providing service for those students. What, uh, according to the committee, um, uh, we'll forward uh, not only the, the grid, salary grid, and, but also we'll take the piece out of the employee handbook that, that addresses uh, our teacher model. Okay, and that, that piece I could probably... And it's not a new model yet, Kate. We're just okay. looking at the current model. Okay. And what are the pros and the cons? Oh, then I think I could probably find sure. that. I could find that. But he could easily, because that's just a forward, because we, the committee also asked for that information, okay. so we sent it off. So it's so. in our, it's up front. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. thanks. Okay. And finally, uh, just a reminder of the upcoming school board workshop. I think we, hope we've heard from everybody. I think we're ready to go on Tuesday, March 18th. Now remember, Monday, on the 17th, is the candidate forum. Yep. And so the very next night, 6 o'clock, and we'll be doing a virtual uh, workshop with Mr. Fail. So he'll stay in warm North Carolina, and we'll, we'll be here. So and really, uh, again, you, Matthew will work with you on really a board evaluation, which I think he presented to you way back last August. It's been a while, but and I hoped in his last visit to get to that point. 
but probably to begin with that is directly related to your your role with continue, leading the district and continuous improvement. Out of that, look forward to establishing a smart goal or two specific to the board's work uh, related to continuous improvement. And um, and when you do that, then you'll be adopting what's called strategy with that. And you know we we talk more and more about the Plan Do Study Act tool, the PDSA. And so the plan is to actually engage the board in your own PDSA as a group, as a team. And so that uh, is going to be packed in that night. And but that's the tentative agenda that you can look forward to. So I know Jan will make sure we're up and running with the technology that night. And 6 o'clock right here on Tuesday the 18th. Were we, was board evaluation going to be part of that? Or was there, because I know we talked about that in establishing the calendar, or the agenda. Yeah, well, I think we'll want to see, this is more focused on the continuous improvement and one of your primary responsibilities. And out of that, thank you for mentioning that, um, out of that, it may help us uh, to go back, uh, it's that time of year again, where the board, that, that board self Reflection evaluation is due and comes up. You decided to hold that until you can have at least this conversation. Okay. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Then moving on to reports and discussion, preliminary budget <coughs> updates. And I'm just going to have Jay start, and we're going to kind of go back and forth. see on the screen is what was in your packet, um, provides you an update to those budget input variables. Although we are, I have to say, still continuing to work on this final column, which would be the updates here in February. The one notable update that you'll see occurs in the expenditure category, the third category from the top, or the bottom category. You can see on the far right hand side that we've updated the salaries increase to be one point four six. Carlson sent out to the board, maybe it was a week ago, an update that we received from the Wisconsin Employment Relations Commission. Remember, uh, under current collective bargaining law, the Consumer Price Index Urban is what defines the maximum increase without referendum, negotiated without referendum, uh, that a board can go to. And it's that amount that we've placed in the salaries to increase category. Now uh, back in December, based upon what we thought was some trending in consumer price index, we had put 2.5% in there. Um, we now have what we believe are the final percentages. So that is an update that you see here. figures uh, translate into this document, a document that Dr. Carlson prepares an accompanying memo to, is it more to the description of the conference? We'll go through some of these quickly, and uh, I'm going to just do a few first items here, and then Dr. Carlson will take over the uh, majority of the expenditure items. So as you remember, uh, this is from 1415, preliminary budget, remember that <coughs> preliminary budget? We moved to a proposed budget, and finally, in October of 2014, we will approve an original budget. So there's many changes that I guess uh, uh, this is the best estimate at this point. And so this budget memo focuses only upon the changes that are occurring from last year's budget to this year's budget. First category, a group of changes, has to do with the revenues or sources of funding that we anticipate. And when we look at the revenue limit formula, which controls equalized aid and tax levy, that shows up there on that line one. 
we're expecting a little over $1.2 million in additional revenue in 2014-15 compared to this current year. And then you can see there's a small adjustment in non-grant sources of funding. And we're really at this point in time not forecasting any change in the grant sources of funding. So <coughs> Expenditure or uses of funds. These are new again, uh, changes from last year to the upcoming year. In the first line, we'll see it's salaries and benefits. And this is where that 1.46% uh, increase in salaries translates into dollars. And on that budget input variable sheet, we also saw a 10% increase in health insurance. And you also saw a 3.5% increase in dental insurance. So those are the salaries and benefits increases that generate $925,000 worth of new expenditures. Everything else remaining the same. Uh, those increases in salaries and benefits will actually consume $925,000 of that $1.2 million. As you're aware, tuition or payments that we have to make to other districts will result in an estimated $182,000 in additional further reducing or consuming the $1.2 million of additional sources. Now the next line is uh, insurance increases. We still, still really need to get some hard numbers from our insurance carrier. Now this is not health or dental insurance, but this is the liability insurance. Workers' comp, the, the largest premium we pay is in the form of workers' compensation. At this point, and this could change in the next two weeks when we come back to this information, uh, but we're looking at $33,000 of increased expense in that category. And I'm going to let Dr. Carlson continue with the rest of the page here. And as I should have said at the start of this, uh, should have paper copies of all this in your folder. I know that um, I did not send uh, most of this out until Friday, I believe, and make available. So it is something that we need to buy through tonight. You are not being asked tonight to approve this. This will be, we'll be asking for the board's consideration at the next board meeting for approval of the preliminary budget. When we continue on the new cost, you'll see in that top section, a 1.0 FT district construction technology coordinator. A year ago, you saw that sitting right there as well. And as we went on throughout the budget development process, um, by the time we got to the October and approving of the original budget, that that position had been deleted. Uh, we were not in a place to. Um, we had posted and made some attempts. We were not in place to put that position in place. So I had shared with you that we were going to take those dollars and repurpose those to technology um, as a one-time um, as a one-time allocation for this year. And those dollars are currently being used some in some way, much like they were intended in that position to um, provide staff development for our staff with technology as well as some uh, contracted services um, for that as well. So now, that position, we have every intent, that position you had approved a year ago, and we have every intent to uh, post that and move forward. Okay, so I just wanted to share that. Any questions on that position? So does it really become new dollars if it's being used? Or are you going to continue to use that? It's only there because it was placed down into one-time dollars. 
Now, let me just go back, let me go down here to the bottom, and let, because it's a fair question, sure. This 280,000 down here, this is discontinued expenses. These are the one time that we allocated for this current school year. So now, this is gone after this year. So that 80, I think it might have been 80,000 a year ago, that 80,000 is uh, that 80 of this 280,000 down here. So because I have uh, listed it this way, it's discontinued, we do have to now put it, put it back up here. Okay. Good question. So then, when all that work was done, and all, all that done, we, and, and we, we also looked at our discontinued expenses, I knew that there was some um, funds that we would take in consideration of trying to address those ongoing unmet, underfunded needs. You recall, you were involved with much of that work, approving even the ranking of those needs and uh, the, the big areas that uh, uh, were identified as priorities were instruction, um, staff development, classroom uh, resources, and so on, um, technology, and transportation. So those were the uh, major areas out of that work that, again, had been presented to you as well. So, I want to work on looking at those areas, and my, this is my recommendation to you, and focus in on the one-time allocations, and that uh, the, again, clearly the top ranked need identified was in the uh, area of instruction. And so I would be recommending the greatest allocation going towards that area. $280,000. But I also feel while there, if you look back at much of that material, you'll find uh, at least $450,000 requested right up front in the area of instruction. But I, could, I did not feel that um, I could recommend um, covering that full amount because that would leave us not able to address any of the other areas. And so I would be recommending that in the area of technology, we allocate a one-time allocation for this coming school year of approximately 100,000. Transportation, another 100,000. And while you would not find the area of buildings and grounds or facility maintenance, high ranked highly on uh, using our rubric I also feel that there are still areas that I believe the community has identified, even through that recent community session last fall, um, identifying how important uh, facility maintenance is. And I, I think my recommendation to you is to continue to recognize that, and, and that's where that $50,000 is at, why that's there. You'll Didn't the buildings, the could I just ask, the buildings and grounds committee also asked for $100,000, mm -hmm. didn't they? Additional? I think that that probably is still where that is at, correct. I you know that we, we, we did a lot of great work a year ago, yeah. when in this year the board allocated additional money that we made great gains. But right. yes. I, I should have mentioned right above this group of one time, you'll see program allocations on going subtotal zero. A year ago, we had quite a list there of ongoing where we were able to allocate, put back, put into budgets, what we hope to be yearly budgets, ongoing budgets. You may have remembered, um, uh, those of you that were around several years ago where we had to reduce by 10%, a year ago, you were able to, I guess, essentially give back 10% to many of our areas. A big area was $350,000 to technology. I'm so, uh, you did great work with that as a board, uh, such that we've been able to maintain that. I can confidently come to you and say, we're gonna be able to maintain those ongoing allocations that you made as of a year ago. 
I'm very hopeful that we still have this almost more than half a million dollars that we can look at one-time allocations. I'm not prepared to say recommend to you further ongoing allocations at this time, however. So when that's all said and done, you account for the discontinued expenses. The projected budget balance at this time is a little over forty thousand dollars. What you don't have there is remember there's two pieces, two main components to this, that operational piece and structural piece. I don't have it broken down on your information, but I can tell you it's roughly what's remaining is roughly a thousand dollars in the operational and about thirty-nine thousand in the structural. And my focus and what I present to you really um, stays on on the operational end of things and not the structural. So that's where that is at. Questions of what um, I presented to you there. You also note that I did for tonight put in my narrative budget memo. You did not have that in advance of tonight. You can take that with you and I talk through this a little bit more on it. Okay, any questions? I don't have a question or a comment. Thank you for all of this. I love I love learning about the numbers and watching what you do. Um, I've also followed some political stuff that's going on with Common Core, and it's not a question for you to answer tonight. But in the future, um, I know that our school district and many school districts have put hundreds of thousands of dollars toward Common Core, and I'm just wondering how much we have done in Holman, you know, and maybe other school districts um, as we look at some of the things on the horizon politically it helps me understand what we're dealing with as a district and how that will impact us should things change so again nothing for tonight Dale um, but just a question for the future yeah, you're welcome okay before we can just go to Jay is going to address uh, take a quick look at that This is the budget and adaption format, a format required by the Department of Public Instruction. This provides uh, line item detail uh, of the budget by various funds maintained by the district. It provides the historical perspective of audited revenue, expenses, and balance sheet items uh, from the prior two years, uh, those being pounds B and C, pound D being the current year's original budget, and then E, uh, reflecting uh, the proposed budget for this upcoming year. Uh, this is valuable for people as you want to look at uh, comparatively how do things look last year, uh, in fact, the last three years versus this coming, upcoming year. So there's lots of work that goes on in those prior documents that we share with you, but then it all has to come back together and flow into this document, which uh, not only creates a good comparison across years with us, but it's the way all school districts in the state report. So it creates uniformity in, in how we report school finances throughout the school. So that is, in fact, the document that none of the other documents would you approve uh, at your next meeting, but we will be seeking approval of this document. At that meeting. The other documents help us understand right. what goes into this one. So, And they've evolved over the years, so thank you. Any, okay. Well, then we'll move on to health insurance update. I think that's what's on. I moved my agenda, so it is health insurance update.
this would be the starting point for discussion. Uh, the status quo, and this we can label as option one, and say that, well, if we were just to keep the current health insurance plan status quo, we look at receiving renewal rates in May, followed by notices to the board and staff and implementation. That'd be simple enough. But the renewals <coughs> that we would receive could be substantially greater than the amount that we're planning on, that 10%. And at that point, what would you have as options? If you got to May 28th and, and um, found that the increase was <coughs> substantially more than that. In fact, it'd be making it very difficult at that point to look at any options. Mm -hmm. and you might be left with abrupt decision making that wouldn't <coughs> make anyone happy and probably not serve the best interest of our staff, uh, our community, or our students. So while this may, as option one, be the simplest approach, we're pretty convinced that uh, not the approach we should be using. We've uh, put together <coughs> an alternative approach. And this approach would be mindful of the real possibility that uh, health insurance rates might increase. In fact, in your board packet, you had information on the district's uh, current utilization. Um, we have some very unfavorable trends. When you look at the health insurance cost per employee in the district compared to some norms, um, we're suspecting uh, those may have an adverse effect on a rate increase. We also look at what experts are discussing for Affordable Care Act and the impact that it might have. In fact, uh, Mr. Jeff Anderson, a former executive at F3, an insurance broker in the Milwaukee area, said that some faces that some clients are facing 50 to 60 percent increase as the insurance industry responds to the Affordable Care Act. And so those would be reasons that we would really want to consider a different option as we look at renewing our health insurance plan for the upcoming year. And this timeline reflects uh, that model. In that model, we'd be developing options, which we could take quotes on in the month of March, followed by a presentation of these options to the board. We follow up the board receiving information on the options by communicating the options with staff and gathering feedback, uh, feedback and input. Uh, we would then bring options for the board to approve at the April 14th meeting. We receive quotes by May 1st. And the quotes would then be approved, or pardon me, presented to the board and approved by the board by May 26th. We be presented to the staff immediately following that. We believe that um, in addition to receiving quotes on the status quo, we should be looking at receiving quotes on what was presented as the multiple year direction. If you remember, we had a second year. We should take quotes on that. We should take quotes considering things like our wellness information, what are our greatest threats to the wellness of our staff. We believe we should look at utilization of our health plan um, by our staff. Uh, we've got to be attentive to the Affordable Care Act, um, and we need to be aware of industry trends. So those would be the types of items that the administration would be examining and coming back to you with some potential options that we could quote um, at your mm -hmm. the date there of the meeting, your, uh, pardon me, your 414. Meeting. Yeah. And if you have specific thoughts, we've met with the personnel and governance committee on this mm -hmm. and discussed some early ideas on how
or looking for approval or suggestions on a direction to take? Are we looking for approval or just it's not on the consent agenda, but I think is it? But we're just looking right. for some input and right. as Jay mm -hmm. mentioned we did talk about this at the personnel and governance and we um, this year we've added a couple additional members on that committee both in the HR um, field and it's been very helpful to us and as we discuss this there was a lot of good discussion about that so um, that committee supported this timeline and, and the new direction instead of just the status quo and recommended supported that that we move forward with a different timeline or the timeline that's being um, presented tonight I don't think there needs to be any board action on it it's just to help the board understand that these will be coming forward um, <coughs> I know that you had a presentation at the last board meeting on um, a review of the current the plan that had been presented previously so it really doesn't walk away from that at all but so I see nodding heads so Jay you have I think consensus to move forward on that then thank you and then employee handbook language revisions good evening change that we had noticed we allow employees on who are on a medical leave to request 24 months versus the 12 months of unpaid leave um, however it was brought to our attention as we do have employees in that situation that if they are on health insurance waiver premium that can go longer than 24 months so in order to allow them to maximize that full benefit um, we added some language to allow that to happen for those employees um, under the benefits during their unpaid leave we added in not only does this part apply when they're on FMLA but also on workers compensation or intermittent um, mandatory military duty so those provisions also apply to those items um, one other item that this has been feedback from payroll and employees allowing if an employee does need to pay um, premium insurance deductions rather than having them have to write us a check can't we just take it from their payroll um, so that is something that will um, be put into place if this language is approved. Um, clarifying um, under item number four here, under the unpaid leave, what they retain while out on leave um, and what does not accrue. So um, added some items here that um, are already in place but need to be put into the language. Um, and additionally on item five, that also applies to the health reimbursement arrangement, which um, was not clarified in the language to begin with. Um, so the two items that were just passed out um, are in reference to item F here. Um, and you'll see in this language that um, the recommendation is to pull all of this language out and add it as its own section under this part of the handbook. language just identified as um, donation of leave under unpaid leave. Um, some employees um, suggested 
to us that it is very difficult to find donation of leave or sick bank, as we used to call it, under unpaid leave. So um, hopefully by pulling that out, it will help to um, allow employees to easier, easily locate that information um, in the future if they need to. Um, one item also that you'll see is the only change. schedule. So as Dr. Carlson presented earlier today about the calendar and um, that consortium that is um, going on, we have this flex language with the fund set in here of 2014 for our employees who are educational assistants and how they can flex their time for early release when they're not working. Um, so rather than spend a lot of time drafting new language and how can we make that work within the early release time or the early schedules that we have. Let's just advance uh, another year on the flex language that we currently have that's working and see where um, the calendar may lead to at that time. So the last item is um, substitute pay rates. Um, the recommendation here would not go into effect until July 1st, 2020. They are highly specialized positions that we may use a substitute for. Um, so the um, recommendation is that at the time we need a substitute in that position, we'll determine what the pay rate should be. Um, and it's going to be based on the criteria that we have listed, um, not limited to, however, those items. So we can take a look at the whole picture and determine uh, what the appropriate pay a change for educational assistance, buffing them up to $11 an hour and custodian to 12 um, Other than that, no other changes. Any questions to these three items? Questions. Anita? Um, I have a question on the donation of leave section. Um, the statement that you have, the employee donating the days must be actively employed when the days are used. Mm -hmm. Do you... When days are used by a staff member who needs them, are they using a specific days specific to a donor? Yes, so there's only a bank created when a need arises. Um, and then that bank is used in the order that the days are donated. So if I need a bank, and Jay's the first to donate, and then Gary, and then Lisa, um, Jay's day may be used, and then Gary's, and if I don't need any more time, we wouldn't use the day that we so there's not like a bank sitting out there right now no. and a year from now you might tap into that bank? No. Okay. So whoever donates to you, there almost has to be some planning involved if they're, let's say, going to be leaving the district or they're, you know, thinking they may, you understand what I'm saying, like they have to be employed. Mm -hmm. So if they're like five other people that had donated prior to the one that's donating and the one that's donating plans on leaving the district in 30 days yeah, then they their so they may not be able that could go away or that would disappear mm -hmm. Any questions okay again and this will come back to okay. you at the next board meeting so please forward questions if you have more after tonight Thank you very much. Then moving on to consent agenda items. We've got a number of consent agenda items. Um, I would 
entertain a motion to approve them as published. Unless you want to pull any out. I would so approve. Okay, there, a motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda items as presented. All the